Happy New Year's from the Bender Bunker, where we've been offering up hot B-Bender action mixed with country twang guitar since 2017, and now we are ready to kick off year 2022, year number five here in the bunker, and we are doing so with a lesson we're calling the Five Fret Challenge, which sounds kind of ominous. Is it one of those TikTok challenges, maybe? No, it's not that. Basically, what the uh, genesis of the Five Fret Challenge is, it's a trick I use here in the bunker when I kind of hit the creative roadblocks of trying to come up with the next lesson. Now, I'm starting a new year, I want to come up with something twangy, bendy, and uh, was kind of drawing a blank. So one of the tricks, I have several, but this is one I use frequently, is to purposely limit what I can do on the guitar to see if that leads to more creativity. Now, you, you know, we've got six strings and 20 something frets and a bender mechanism, the mathematical possibilities are darn near endless, which is what makes it fun, but also at times can be intimidating. So what I'll do is purposely limit myself. So in this case, from the fifth fret down to the open strings, nothing above the fifth fret. So we've just neutralized that. We're only working down here. If you go back and watch that intro that I just played, you'll see I never go above the fifth fret on anything I do in the intro. And by doing that, it forces my creativity to really focus on what's available and what's left on the fretboard instead of being intimidated by all the possibilities. Now, I also took this even further with the backing track that I created here in the Bunker Studios, very twangy little backing track that's fun to play over. But I also said, okay, you can't do the backing track over the fifth fret. So that's what this is. This is an A going to D seventh and E, and it's backing track's basically this. <laughs> seventh and E, but I never got above the fifth fret on the backing track. So now I've got to go back and do the bender parts that you heard there in the opening. So thankfully, we're down here. At least we still have the open chords available to us, right? So I'm just going to go ahead with a lick we've used several times here in the bunker before based off an open A chord, which is... <laughs> going to D seventh, I'm switching to a D seventh. <laughs> And you take that shape up too, you're in E, E seventh mentality, but I'm gonna walk it up with the bender. Like that. And then I'm gonna walk it down with the bender in the E. Back to A. All right, well that's a good start and that is the result of the five fret limitation, open chords. Now, I don't wanna repeat that on the second pass. I need to come up with something different. So I'm going with a real staccato passage on the next one. I actually got the great legendary Buck Trent in mind. Anybody remember Buck Trent? I first saw him in that crazy banjo type guitar thing he does with the tuning pegs for his bending. He's doing all his bending with tuning peg moves, which is incredibly hard to do. I saw him on the Porter Wagner show reruns I watched on YouTube. So real staccato, real fast on the bender. And that's when I go back to the next pass for the A section. I'm, I got old Buck in mind, which is... That's the A section, back to the top two of a D7. Transferring over into a four two string for D. Now we've got to finish an E, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the top two of that E seventh and walk it down with the bender. And there you have it, your backing track and all your lead bender work over it five frets and below. And it came pretty quick, actually, once I convinced myself we were gonna go ahead and try this with just five frets or less. And that, my friends, is the result of the five fret challenge. If you'd like to take the challenge and have me walk you through what I did in a lot more detail, because that's what I'm gonna do next, then go ahead and grab the Bender instrument of your choice. And let's get going here to kick off the new year at the Bender Bunker with the five fret challenge coming up next. Well, okay, it looks like you are all set to take the five fret challenge here at the Bender Bunker. Nice to have you on board. Before we get rolling, just real quick, if you're enjoying the content here on the channel, consider giving us a quick thumbs up. Let's keep that YouTube algorithm happy and fed, if you would. Thank you for that. Also, I want to direct your attention to the detail section below this video. Expand that out. You're going to see a few things there. One, our Instagram channel. If you want behind-the-scenes photos and more guitar clips than what you're seeing here, check out the Instagram channel. You'll see that link down below. All the gearheads will also see all the equipment we use here at the bunker, all the pedals and the recording gear, the specs on this guitar. It's all down there waiting for you. And then you'll also see the Bender Bunkers PayPal account. If you'd like to support the channel by sending over a virtual beer donation, virtual tip jar, if you will, to support the channel, we've got our own 
PayPal account. You can do that safely and securely. And a big thanks to everyone that did over the holidays. A lot of tasty holiday beers uh, were, were drunk. Thanks to viewers like you. Thank you for that. All right, let's get rolling with the Five Fred Challenge. Now, as I mentioned in the opening, I was down here in the open chord mentality with the bender since I'm limited below the fifth fret, and we were doing A, D, and E. So the first thing we're going to learn is a lick I believe we've learned before here on the channel, possibly even a year ago on the last January 21 when we did the uh, Jumpstart Your B Bender uh, with this one in A. <laughs> Let's knock that bad boy out. Basically an A, open A chord, but we are leaving the B string open, second string open. So I've got my you know, index finger here on the fourth string second and my middle next to it on the third string second. And for this lick, I'm never moving them. Once I put them there, they're anchored there. So I'm starting on the fourth string second. One pick, slide down, one back up, All right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick the third string second next to it and come back to the fourth string second. I'm going to go up to the B string, open, and I'm going to hit the third string second next to it. So that's your opening sequence. Kind of letting that A chord ring out. Now we're going to go back to the open B string and take the bender up. And then hop up to the high E third with our little finger for one note. Come back to the third string second for a note. Come back to the high E open this time. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the B string, the bender's still up, let it down, bring it back. Bender's engaged again, right? So now I'm going to go up to the high E second with my, what is that, ring finger for a quick note. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the open B next to it, but it's still bent. And now I'm going to hit the open string high E. And then come back to the B string to let it down. And then end with that A note on the third string second. Third string second, high open. Open B string up and down. Third string second, or high E second. B string still bent. High E open. B string down string second. Now I kind of muted a little bit with my palm to give it more of that chicken picking sound like you heard in the opening so it'd be more. All right now the bender's down we just did the A section. I'm leaving my middle finger where it is on the third string second and I'm letting my index finger and my ring finger create the D7th chord, just a straight D7th chord. And once I have that, I'm going third string down for a down pick and taking the bender. And that's all I'm doing. So I'm down picking the D7th chord, starting on third string, taking the bender up. Once I got the bender up, I'm doing the quick note on the high E fourth with my little finger. One note, and then I'm doing the B string. Little finger comes off, so now it's the high E second. And then I'm hitting the uh, B string to take the bender down and up. And then letting back down again. And then the bender ends down. All right, here's what we've got so far. Have a quick throw on the D7. So I wanted to get back down. Now I'm really going to concentrate off this D7th. I'm going to try and get up here to an E7th shape, two up, but I'm really only concentrating on the top two strings, not too concerned with what's going on in that third G string. So I'm taking that shape I already have right for the D7th. That's first fret, second fret on the high E. And I'm blasting it up with the bender. So I'm. So I'm down picking those top two once and I'm walking it up with the bender and I'm bouncing it up with the bender, if you will. So there you end up in the E7 shape. So now I've got the, as you can tell, my index fingers on the second string third and my ring fingers there on the high E fourth. That's just bouncing up from the D7 shape to the E7. And then you end with the bender fully engaged. We're gonna do this next for the E7. 
So remember, we got up there, bender's fully engaged. I'm gonna use my little finger for the high E fifth for a note. <laughs> Going to the B string that's already covered. <laughs> and then my little finger comes off. <laughs> and then I go back to the B string for an up and down on the bender. <laughs> to take my ring finger off the high E so I can have it open. I'm leaving my index finger on the B string third with the bender still engaged. Now I'm going to do high E open, the B string on the third, up and down with the bender. <laughs> Bender's engaged again, right, because it was up and down. And then I'm going to take all my fingers off and just do the top two strings of... Starting with the high E, then the B string to let the bender down. So I'm resolving into the A, which will be your third string second. And then a quick twang run, which I'm kind of using, uh, I'm working off of that A note, A note right there, and I'm doing four string, four, two, and then the A string second. All right, here we go from the top, kind of slow. Practice that first section, get it nice and smooth, and we're gonna come back with more of the staccato action. Coming up next. Hey, let's have some fun with some staccato chicken picking kind of playing here as we return back to the dominant key of A, kind of get into that Buck Trent section I was referring to, real staccato, real muted. For A, let's dive into that, shall we? Top two strings, and they start open, so how hard could it be? Again, I'm muting it quite a bit with my palm now on that back pickup. That's what you're hearing. There's a little slap going on here in my studio monitor. But that's uh, that's up to you, salt and pepper, to taste on how much you want to mute it. But that's what you're going to be hearing out of me in this section. And so I'm starting with that open B string, and I'm doing a muted triplet. That's three notes. One, two, three, real quick on the open B. And then on the four string on the open B, it takes the bender up. It takes it up real fast. But it's really going up on that fourth note. And then when I get to the top of that, I'm hitting the muted open high E next to it. So it really sounds like this. And then the bender comes right back down just as quickly as it went up and silently because I am muting any ringing with my pick hand. And the bender's unengaged. Now, index finger covers the top two on the third fret. And I'm going to do a real quick muted B string note on the third straight into the high E on the third with the bender going up. And the bender coming back down without you hearing it, just like it did before. And the bender's unengaged. We just used it for that one quick up on the B string. Now it's back down. We've got our index finger there. Let's leave it there. Now we're going to do the third B string third for a quick note back up with the bender and then the high E fifth and then keep the bender engaged when we get there. Don't let it fall back down like we've been doing. So here's what we've got now, three sections. Except on this third section, we're leaving the bender engaged. What we're also doing is when we do that high E fifth, I'm coming back and just taking my finger off the B string ever so slightly to do a dead percussive note. Right there at the end. Comes right off that high E fifth, straight back to it. Okay, now I've got the bender still engaged. My thumb's holding it. I'm muting it so the open strings aren't ringing, but I'm taking my hand off because I'm going high E open to B string open to let the bender down. And that completes the A section. Make sure you get that percussive note in there to set you up to those open strings to let the bender back down. All right? Bender's unengaged. We're gonna go into the D7 section, which is gonna sound like this. We just came up. Bender's unengaged. 
we're gonna go to the top two strings of a D7 shape like we did before. So index fingers B string first and then my ring fingers on the high E second. And this is a four note situation. I'm gonna start with the B string first. Quick muted note, take the bender up and hold it. Then I'm doing the high E second, back to the B, go back to the high E open, keep the bender engaged. So we just did those four notes. Now I'm gonna let my middle finger go over to the four string second, pick it and slide it up to the fourth. And then when I get there, index finger falls on B string third and two notes with the second note letting the bender down. That's your D seventh section, okay? Bonus points if you can keep the fourth and the second string and ringing together I like the way that sounds. So coming out of the A into the D7. And the bender's unengaged. Now we've got to get out of here with our E7 section, which is going to be. And we're going to be working the E7 shape that we used before, just the top two strings of it. So again, my index finger is going back where it's been living a lot lately, which is the B string third and then my ring fingers up here on the high E fourth. So real quick, we're gonna start with the B string, quick muted note up on the bend, then the high E fourth, keep the bender engaged and do a dead note after it. So it's a three event situation, again, two notes and a dead note, and the bender's still engaged. Now we're gonna switch out of that seventh position to more of a, just a top two of a D chord. So I'm going index, high E second, and then middle on the B string third. This is gonna let my bender down. Now I'm starting on the high E second, going to the, the, the B string third to let the bender down. Bender's unengaged now. So now we're gonna go back to that E seventh, but we're gonna do the other bottom part of it, which is the second and third string this time. So now I'm gonna slide in with my middle finger to the third string, your G string fourth, and then that's gonna allow my index finger to fall back where it's been living on the B string third. I can take the, the bender up with that. So it sounds like this. Hold the bender there and then do two dead notes. Again with your palm, I'm doing kind of the high E back to the B. Two. So one dead note after the first one. Right? Then we're gonna hear their D section, D chord, letting it down with no dead note unengaged and then I'm sliding into this hold the bender and do two dead notes and then I can take my hand off and do you guessed it high E B string open to let the bender down and then you end with your A note which is third string second insert twang riff at the end of your choice all right, here's the three sections together. I had to figure out what, uh, what what's the final kind of A chord I hadn't made and not get above the fifth fret. I'd go with the regular A chord. All right. my friend now have all sections you can put them together i'd recommend maybe at this point going back to the beginning it's going to make a lot more sense when you watch that intro now and it's all going to come together real quick before i get on out of here if anybody was interested in what i was doing in the very beginning of the intro i just kind of warm up with those but i was doing some harmonics that might be interesting to a few again it's a d and e all i was doing the open uh, i was doing the top three strings only the high e was always open oh, i was just putting my uh just doing an a note with my index for a and then leaving the top two strings open and then i was just doing the start of a d seventh chord again the high e open doing the same with the e again leaving the high e open and what i started doing was if you go up here on the top two strings of the fifth fret pre-engage the bender and then do harmonic starting with the high E to the B string and letting the B string down kind of quick.
So anybody was interested in the opening, now that's all I'm doing there. All right, I'm going to get on out of here. I hope you enjoyed this one. I had fun showing it to you. Kick off 2022 in some twangy bendy style. At least uh, we tried. And again, I appreciate all the support and folks coming here to the bunker. Let's make it a, a super bendy year this year. The year of the bent, 2022. And I'm going to get out of here as I've been doing all the previous four years with our motto. It is never too late to go on a bender. And I certainly hope you do. And if Santa brought you a new bender guitar, well, you found the right place. Welcome to the Bender Bunker. we got plenty to going on in the past you can review and plenty ahead of us this year. So I'll see you again real soon. Enjoy this one. Uh, work on it. Uh, hit me in the comments with any questions. And uh, I'll be back with some more lessons here in the very near future. Until then, keep it bent.